Well, hello everyone and welcome to the open house on Fisherman's Terminal Redevelopment. We're glad to have you with us today. This meeting will be recorded and is subject to public disclosure. And due to the number of participants, we'd like to ask everyone to keep your cameras turned off and your microphones muted. Uh, there will be a question and answer session at the end of the presentation. You can post your questions in the chat feature throughout the presentation, or once we begin the question and answer session, you can uh, use the raise your hand function and we'll call on you individually. Uh, please keep your questions and comments to a maximum of two minutes so we can answer as many questions as possible. And with that, I would like to introduce Port of Seattle Commissioner Peter Steinbrook. Well, great. Um, that's an awfully formal photo. I have to do something about that. Well, here I am, and I'm happy to be here, and happy Earth Day to everyone. It's so exciting to have so many of you uh, join us today. I'm Port Commissioner Peter Steinbrook, and uh, this group of stakeholders has been is is uh, has been called together um, so that we can have uh, your input and uh, ideas about our planned capital programs at Fisherman's Terminal. And I just want to share with you that this is for me a listening session to hear from you um, for the most part and hear your responses to what you're going to see, which um, uh, there's some pretty exciting plans coming up. Um, this is not, uh, Fisherman's Terminal is not something new to me uh, as I have joined the port as a commissioner. I was a participant in some of the earlier outreach sessions for Fisherman's Terminal uh, quite a few years ago in the long-term planning, well before I was elected to the port commission. It may have something to do with my motivation for running for the port in the first place was to participate in the future of Fisherman's Terminal. I consider it uh, one of the most iconic places in Seattle with an incredible legacy uh, in this city and region as it relates to um, uh, the um, activities around uh, historical fishing uh, and seafood. And when I was on the council, uh, city council, I was a steadfast early advocate for maritime and industrial economy and the jobs that go with it. More and more, it seems like protecting maritime and industrial sector is become becoming overlooked as a priority in Seattle. Um, it's your industry as a sustainable catch, seafood. What could be better? The North Pacific fishing fleet should not be taken for granted. And that's why I want you to know that you have an ally and you have allies here at the Port of Seattle and you have a special ally in me. So we've worked hard together to protect <clears> the <throat> industry and we'll continue to do so. The Port continues to inform and work with City Hall, with Seattle City Hall and governments about the importance of the maritime sector. It seems like we have a lot of educating to do around the county there. Uh, together, some of the things we've done, we've worked for federal funding for the locks. We've defended the marine ways and our net sheds from the path of light rail, or at least one of the intended alignment paths uh, for the light rail extension to Bal and the Ballard Bridge expansion. We've worked together to defend industrial businesses from issues arising around the Burke Gilman Trail. Uh, and we are there to support uh, the um, avoidance, if you will, of gentrification of Salmon Bay, along with the <laughs> canal and the cut, whoops, through, throughout uh, the Ballard Interbay um, Manufacturing and Industrial Center. Together, the port in recent years has played uh, defense in so many of these issues, but now we're looking to the future to ensure that there will be a sustainable catch tomorrow. This is your opportunity to hear to uh, to to voice your views on the protection of maritime jobs and the fishers' way of life, as it is supported by our facilities at Fisherman's Terminal. Uh, I do have a um, personal story to share here with regards to Fisher Fisherman's Terminal and fishing in general. As you may know, my brother Dave, Captain Dave, as I call him, is a 40-year gill netter. 
and he kept his boat, the Lopez Lass, uh, a 36 foot gill netter built on Lopez Island, in fact, for 20 years. He was moored there as he fished Puget Sound. Eventually, he gave it up, feeling um, a bit tired of, and stressed with, the, with the, the, the lack of fish he was catching there at Puget Sound as we've seen the runs dwindle. My son, Ben, also crews on his boat, the Majestic, in Alaska, and he's an eight-year seasoned gill netter. So two years ago, I was able to spend a little time a uh, couple of three weeks, in fact, crewing for my brother Dave as the Green Horn. And I took all of my lessons and instruction from my 25 year old son, Ben. Uh, and I can tell you, for me, it was pretty stressful work at first. And I wasn't sure how I was going to get through it, working around the clock with the with the tides and the calls for for fishing openings. So I know how hard the com commercial fishers work. It's 24 seven, lots of things can go wrong from engine breakdowns, uh, propel nets uh, caught in the propeller, uh, all kinds of things, sandbars, getting stuck on a sandbar is no fun. I know that. <laughs> and uh, also the fierce competition for the best uh, spots, the fishing, the glory holes, if you will, and getting there first. And I'll never forget the call from my brother, David, from his comfortable captain's seat up on the top deck. Fish on! <laughs> Jumpers! <laughs> so, the Port of Seattle wants you to be your, wants to be your partner, and you, when you are moored at, excuse me, um, the, when you're moored here at Fisherman's Terminal, and to promote the industry in the same way we've been doing since 1914 when Fisherman's Terminal was built as the first facility of the Port of Seattle. Our earliest beginnings uh, in 1911, voters of King County had a revolutionary idea to create an organization, I think it was among the first in the United States, to give the public a voice in how Seattle's waterfront would be developed and support industry and eliminate cutthroat competition at the rail yards that uh, were creating a lot of problems and havoc. Your voice today is a direct continuation of what was started in 1911 and will help chart the course for the next 100 years. No small task. We've got a great leadership team and Stephanie Jones, who heads the Maritime uh, Ports uh, Maritime Division, will have more to say about this in a moment. Our plans here are a direct result of many earlier listening sessions going back several years, as I mentioned. These plans represent a firm commitment to investing in the future of the industry and ensuring there are good jobs and a sustainable catch in the seafood industry for years to come. One aspect of the plan I'm especially excited about is the Maritime Innovation Center, which you'll be hearing about. It's, uh, it will take the Maritime Center We'll take what is likely the port's oldest building. I think it is the oldest building, uh, the ship Seattle Ship Building, excuse me, the Seattle Ship Supply Building, and transform it into a new industry hub, maritime industry hub, a place where ideas can for be formulated, research tested, perfected, and, and we hope commercialized for the new green marine uh, future. Investments like this are important steps toward not only forward not only for the port, but for the entire maritime industry in our region. I look forward to hearing your comments. Thank you for your participation. Fish on. And now I'd like to introduce, as I mentioned, Stephanie Jones Stebbins, the Managing Director of the Port's Maritime Division. Stephanie. Unmute. Yeah, there you go. I thought we were going to be done with I'm still on mute, but <laughs> okay. um, I guess I still haven't got the hang of it. So uh, thank you very much, Commissioner Steinbrook. I'd like to add my welcome to the commissioners and thank you for your time, interest and input on the investments that we're planning at Fisherman's Terminal. So the Port of Seattle Maritime Division uh, includes commercial fishing and workboat related properties, crews, the grain terminal, recreational marinas, 
and a variety of other uh, industrial and commercial properties. These are all the uh, properties that really make up the op maritime operations. And as I, I hope the folks here know far better than the rest of Seattle that this really is uh, Seattle's history and legacy. I always want us to also be thinking about this as our future. And it's really critical as we think about our maritime industries um, that we, we think about what it will take to be successful here in Seattle in the future. And a focus on innovation, on sustainability, and on equity are, are some of the key things we're thinking about as we think about you know, the next hundred and some years of successful maritime operations. So the projects that you're gonna hear about today are a really important part of thinking about that future. In total, the current investments at Fisherman's Terminal represent an investment of more than $21 million. And those are not the only investments that we are making in, in uh, commercial fishing and maritime. We're also making investments at Terminal at Pier 90 for six and eight and on the 91 uplands. There's another almost $90 million worth of investments in the future of the maritime industry. Some of you will and may have been here and remember outreach that we conducted on a long-term strategic plan um, in 2016. So the input we received at that time has helped inform the projects that we are uh, talking about today. So the, the Maritime Innovation Center is, is really key there, uh, a key part of that. And it's, it's really exciting to me and to many people for a couple reasons. One, as, as uh, Commissioner Steinbrook mentioned, it repurposes the iconic Seattle Ship Supply Building and turns it into an example of environmentally friendly design and construction. It also will host an ongoing program to identify and nurture companies that are doing innovative and groundworking work, work in maritime. So last year, in cooperation with the Maritime, Washington Maritime Blue and Nonprofit Alliance, uh, we hosted our first Maritime Accelerator cohort of 11 companies. Since graduation from the Accelerator program in April, participating companies have had significant success, including a substantial Series A equity investment, seed level funding, demonstration projects, customer contracts, regulatory certifications, and major revenue increases. So these are maritime startup businesses that are really launching here in Seattle. Our second accelerator cohort of 11 companies is underway right now, and we hope to see results like the first company uh, cohort. So you're also going to hear today, in addition to uh, Maritime Innovation Center and the work that that um, that entails, you'll hear about a variety of site improvements that we are making to the overall site at Fisherman's Terminal. And we're interested to know what you think of that and we'll appreciate your input. Uh, we will be making uh, improvements to the interpretive signage that tells the story of fishing at the terminal. And we'll be reaching out to some of our key partners to offer input on interpretive signage as well. Um, I, I'd like to now turn this over to Kira Lease, who is the port's director of real estate development. And um, with that, I will say, take it away, Kira. Super excited to hear what you have to say. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Stephanie. Thanks, Commissioner Steinbrook. And thank you all for being here this evening to get an update on the port's investments at Fisherman's Terminal. I'm glad to be with you. My name is Kira Lease. I'm the Ports of Seattle's Director of Real Estate Development, and I oversee real estate development for the Port of Seattle. I'm here today along with Elena Franks, Fisherman's Terminal's project manager, representing a large team from across the port that have been working with a talented team of designers and consultants to make some major improvements to Fisherman's Terminal. We're here today to tell you about them. Tonight, I'm going to give you a preview of what's coming at Fisherman's Terminal over the next year or two and bring you up to date with our plans. We'll talk a bit about the process uh, that both Commissioner Steinbrook and Director Jones Stebbins referred to that led to the particular set of projects we're talking about today, starting with the strategic planning effort for Fisherman's Terminal back in 2015 and 16. We'll talk about projects that are moving forward, some that aren't, and some planned upgrades to existing facilities. Finally, we'll get into some detail about our largest planned investment, the development of the Maritime Innovation Center, which you've already heard something about at the former Seattle Ship Supply Building. 
I'll briefly describe the intent of that project and our partners there and turn it over to Mike Jobes from Miller Hall, the Seattle architects who've been designing these improvements on behalf of the port. It's pretty cool. We hope you agree. Next slide, please. So what's in the future for Fisherman's Terminal? As the home port of the North Pacific Fishing Fleet, Fisherman's Terminal deserves a future as vibrant and industrious as its past. Industries and operations which persevered through the economic storm and rough waters of a global pandemic, we know it's not been easy. We want our investments at Fisherman's Terminal to hearken to that past, that hearty present, but also point to a vibrant future where people here continue to be proud of where they work and what they do. Next slide, please. Back in 2015, the Port Commission initiated a strategic plan for Fisherman's Terminal. Some of these meetings included outreach, and many of you may have participated in them back then. That work eventually became part of the Fisherman's Terminal strategic plan that the Commission accepted in late 2016. The strategic plan brought together important themes and priorities that form the vision of the future of the terminal in line with the organization's long-term goals and strategies for operations and investment into the maritime sector. From that broad palette of ideas and suggestions, we formed a scope that focused on our core industries out at Fisherman's Terminal, maritime and fishing. And the goals that you see outlined here are the objectives that we have for each individual project. I'm not going to read these to you. You can you can focus on them. But broadly speaking, all these goals for implementation, we see growing the economic value um, of the sector, prioritizing investments that enhance our current operations and the opportunity to recognize and enhance the public's appreciation of both fishermen's terminal, but more especially the fishing and maritime trades that utilize it and have productively utilized it for 100 years, even during a global pandemic. Next slide, please. Along with that, we also developed a set of design principles to guide and influence our design process. What do we have to work with in this site? In this list, you see a focus on how the terminal is used and experienced by everyday users. These are conceptual ingredients, if you will, in our design recipe and we'll hear more about how those were employed when we uh, hear from Mike Jobes at Miller Hall a bit later in the presentation. Next slide, please. Now, what exactly and where exactly are we working at Fisherman's Terminal? So this is a rough depiction of the projects and boundaries. I'll go over it in brief. Our strategic planning process included looking at all the properties and buildings at Fisherman's Terminal, including the West Wall Building, the Downey Buildings, the opportunities for shared storage, all the existing buildings, as well as looking at particular improvements at the gateway entrance to the site at 21st and Emerson, where the bank building sits today. In 2016, the Port Commission authorized funds for design, and in the end, we dug in and designed three projects, if you will, for this first phase of development. Uh, a building at the gateway site, which would sit um, at today at the site where the vacant bank building sits, as well as the net shed seven and eight seen here in the foreground. We designed a renovation of the ship supply building uh, just off dock number four to the northeast end of the terminal depicted here in yellow. In addition, in recognition of the objectives to improve visitor experience and safety and the desire to enhance that experience while prioritizing a safe work environment for our fishers, we have a complement of public site improvements that we're uh, working through. Now coming into 2020, um, we're approaching 60% design of all these three projects when it became clear that the port's financial capacity was going to be hit hard by the COVID pandemic. In some areas at the port, we lost a significant level of revenue. We had to make some tough choices about our planned investments, not just at Fisherman's Terminal, but across port operations. Through that lens, the lens of frugality, it was decided to prioritize the development of the ship supply building, where we have significant partners and the site improvements, which are of a relatively low cost, and pause the gateway pro complex in somewhat in deference to continuing on our projects at the T91 Uplands. 
This building was is intended as a trio of industrial spaces united by a bridge component of flexible office and production space. We hope to be able to pick that project back up when funds or partners and funding are available. We're also doing a complement of improvements to the Downey building adding conferencing capacity as well as a planned improvement for the parking lots um, in front of the um, restaurants there that were demanded by um, the need to uh, comply with the ADA capacity for um, folks that um, need that support. So we'll be also at the same time that we're pursuing these design and building projects, we will be um, running a complement of improvements to the operations. Next slide, please. So how do these projects um, fit into the Fisherman's Terminal strategic vision to develop a living community landmark that supports the maritime industry? Next slide, please. First, the site enhancements. This group of projects um, is a set of public space improvements designed to tell the history of Fisherman's Terminal through additional wayfinding improvements, interpretive signage, and artifact recovery. They also help to clue, cue people into the various visitors and drivers at Fisherman's Terminal of where they ought to be. Cars, trucks, people on foot or on wheels and bikes all need to know where to navigate for the best experience and to keep it safe for everybody in order to positively experience Fisherman's Terminal. We also have opportunities here to in integrate partners at the site in a variety of ways, highlighting significant relationships between the port and our various stakeholders at Fisherman's Terminal. Next slide, please. To that end, we have a complementary package of site-wide improvements illustrated here in the area um, with the dotted um, orange um, line. Site-wide improvements um, in this area that we'll see in three generalized buckets. The first is landscaping, planning at key intervals, parking and crosswalk improvements, and new site furniture. Just modernize and update and improve sight lines for visitors in the site. We also have new signage, including new historic and interpretive signage, which both Commissioner Steinbrook and Director Jen Stevens alluded to. Um, as well as new monument signs. So those are the brand name signs that um, clue you into where you are generally. As uh, Stephanie mentioned, there'll be opportunities for stakeholders to participate in the development of these signs content. And please let us know if that's something that you're particularly interested in. Um, a package of lighting improvements finishes us up here to enhance the public safety, particularly in these northerly winter months. Um, you also uh, see the pause gateway project in the foreground again, just to allude that we um, we will also be mounting a planning process to consider what should be done with the site as we wait to re-engage the development process. And that's another area where if you have some ideas about what could be done on those sites, we'd be um, open to hearing from you. So, next slide, please. What we're most excited to tell you about today is the renovation of the Seattle Ship Supply Building. Recast and reclad, it becomes a spot for the Ports Maritime Innovation Center, a roughly 15,000 square foot facility that will promote knowledge transfer, business innovation, workforce development, and general support of maritime and fisheries needs for modernization and technology update, uptake. By housing innovators, just getting established and setting the stage for the next generation of businesses and workforce talent into the next century of this truly ancient industry and set of industries. This is just a preview. You'll get a much wider array of um, visuals when Mike talks to us. Next slide, please. In this endeavor, we have some well-situated partners. The state of Washington's Department of Commerce who will invest $5 million into the project to support the development and operation of the Maritime Innovation Center and the Maritime Blue organization that hosts and runs and manages the Maritime Blue Innovation Accelerator uh, that Stephanie spoke of before, a program that nurtures promising new companies in the maritime sector with technical assistance 
and help connecting to investors for their future. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. This relatively small building will function as a sort of we work for the maritime trade and it's mix of open spaces which promote collaboration and private spaces allowing for businesses operations as well as meeting small conferencing and event capacity to complement the training and classroom space that will be at the foreground here. More than that, more on that uh, building in a moment. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So where are we uh, with this project? We've had some significant um, permitting uh, successes in recent weeks, so we are going through the permitting process. We've secured $5 million in state funding uh, from the Department of Commerce to, to support the development of this building, and we've completed a 60% design. Um, the uh, features we've talked about, the Innovation Center, the advancing and incubating a generation of new maritime focused businesses, we expect to complete the design and permitting process uh, from the balance of 2021 and, and then be poised to build concurrently with the site-wide improvement starting in 2022 with the building opening operations in early 2024. Next slide, please. This is a rough schedule um, for the next uh, year or so. Um, we couldn't be more excited about getting going. Um, and with that, I want to thank you for your attention and uh, introduce Mike Jobs from Miller Hall to take you through the Maritime Innovation Center and our planned success. Thank you. Mike. Thanks, Kira. Thanks a lot. I'm Mike Jobs from Miller Hall, and we're the architects on the project. I'm really excited to have a chance to tell you about the design process, process that we've been engaged in with all these folks from the port and many other stakeholders for the Maritime Innovation Center. Um, the design team's goal was to achieve the port's objective to develop the maritime industry within the historic Seattle Ship Supply Building, the oldest building in the port's existing portfolio. It's a really important building. We set out to bring this building up to today's standards and beyond while honoring and featuring its historic timber structure, highlighting the port's history and at the same time, its innovative future. The project includes a critical list of infrastructure improvements that will prepare the historic structure to serve the port for another 100 years, including the currently failing structural piles will be fresh headed and augmented to support the repurposed structure and a new high purpose energy efficient and low maintenance shell and core will be added to accommodate the new uses envisioned for the mink. Next slide, please. The Maritime Innovation Center is part of a larger master plan that also includes the gateway building. Next slide. Let's see it come in here. It, includes, it also includes the gateway building that Kira uh, discussed earlier, located at the south entrance to the terminal that has a strong relationship to the C-15 building. The daily activity within the complex is on display to visitors, increasing awareness of Seattle's maritime history and innovative future. Next slide, please. Viewed from the Ballard Bridge, the new buildings fit into the terminal while suggesting new possibilities. Next slide. Located at the water's edge, strategically placed windows and translucent walls bring sweeping views to the activity on the docks and out to Salmon Bay, while flooding the workspaces with ample daylight, making artificial lighting unnecessary during most days throughout the year. Next slide, please. A large folding bay door, and next one right away. A large folding bay door opens the space for large gatherings and equipment load in. Next slide. A solar array 
visible from the south generates more than enough electricity to offset the entire building energy use and provide resiliency and lower operational costs. Next slide. The view from the east near the Ballard Bridge in the late evening clearly identifies the terminal as a port of Seattle Enterprise. Next slide. A design charrette including several potential users from the maritime industry led to a mix of classroom, research and development, office and meeting spaces with a priority on flexibility. The main central work and gathering space is open from, from the ground level all the way up to the roof, highlighting the historic trusses from all work areas within the mink and putting the daily activity of the space on full display. Next slide. To meet current seismic code, a new steel structure is woven in, playing a respectful secondary role to the historic wooden structure and painted a light gray to minimize its visual impact. Next slide. The main stair and the common kitchen and coffee area provide opportunities for chance encounters, further encouraging the exchange of ideas and spurring innovation. The upper level provides flexible office space with views out over Salmon Bay and down into the main hall below. Next slide. The admirable sustainability goals that the port has chosen to pursue will make the mink a shining beacon demonstrating the port's stated goal to be the greenest and most energy efficient port in North America. The project sets out to achieve full living building challenge certification. This is a threshold that goes well beyond efficiency and all the way to restorative, eliminating a list of materials made with toxic chemicals generating more power and clean water than it can than it uses, capturing solar power and rainwater on site. Next slide. This is all achieved through a host of measures that salvage and enhance the existing assets of the historic structure. The decaying and non-historic exterior siding is replaced with a new highly insulated and low maintenance envelope that respects the iconic shape of the historic building. A photovoltaic array on the building's south facing roof slopes coupled with a high efficiency electric mechanical system will result in net positive energy and resiliency. Rainwater is captured in highly visible demonstration cisterns where stormwater is treated and used to exceed all of the water needs of the building. You'll be able to see those from the Ballard Bridge as well. The highest sustainability practices will be alive and on display at the Mink. That concludes my comments, and now I'm going to send it back over to Mick, who will be taking your questions. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. Um, I do not currently see any hands raised or any questions in the uh, chat. So oh, now I see one. We have a a question from John Niles. John, please turn on your mic and go ahead, please. Well, a wonderful presentation. Thank you very much. I'm a tenant over there in the West Wall building, and I guess one thing I was wondering is the uh, the coffee area. Was that would that be for anybody aboard the aboard the terminal? Is it for the general public, or is it you know is it going to be kind of an open building? This is a little beyond. Where you are right now. I just wondered what the thinking was on that. Yeah, John, maybe I'll take that one. This is Kira. Um, so we, you know, we're currently talking to the Maritime Blue organization about the role they're playing in the building. So I don't have a direct answer for you, but I think this is a place that we want to have people encouraged to come in um, to some extent. So I don't have an, an honest, authentic answer for you, but I think the intent is where it's possible we want to be open. Thank you. Thank you, John. Do we have any other questions? Boy, with all of that info, I'm surprised we're not seeing more. I'm, I'd encourage you to raise your hand or put it in the chat. We're happy to respond. 
Okay, here's a, a question from Raymond White. Raymond, please unmute your mic and go ahead. Hi, thank you. I'm uh, just curious. I saw a classroom and training spaces there. Do you have an educational partner, a college or university that uh, you're talking to about providing education in the space? So right right now um, we intend classroom space as part of the accelerator's mission and goal for training. Um, and they themselves will have alliances. I think we're well aware of the educational um, organizations inside um, Seattle that could partner with us. We've had some conversations with UW, but right now we're we're focused on the maritime accelerator for the function of the classroom space. But education is a huge component here, and we're excited about the potential of additional partnerships in education. I see Dave McFadden has his hands up. Dave, uh, go ahead, please. Well, I'm Kira's colleague at the port, and I just wanted to add that I would expect we will have a partnership with our Maritime High School that's getting off the ground. And then we also have an alliance with the Maritime Youth Collaborative, which is a workforce development project that uh, Maritime Blue manages. So those are some additional partners we anticipate working with at the center. Thanks. Thanks, All right, Steve. and I see a hand up from Brent Payne. Brent, please unmute your microphone and ask your question. Sure, thanks very much for the presentation. Um, uh, I'm the executive director of United Catch Boats. We've been a tenant of, of the port since 1993. Uh, and we're a different building. Thanks for hanging in there. Yeah. Yeah. Started out in the Norby building, went to, uh, uh, oh, wow, well, a few other buildings. We're in the Westfall building right now. So that you know, there are a number of different uh, trade associations that represent the fleets that fish in the North Pacific and off the West Coast. Would these trade associate in the, in the, the Nordby Conference Room is is a little bit. Um, Peek it, could yeah, use some help. You know, um, we when we, when you first created it, my office was right next to it, and we used that a lot, and a lot of the trade associations used it for meetings, but it sort of outlived its purpose or didn't really function very well for for meetings for industry people. Would, would this facility be able to be able to be used by such groups like, you know, Etsy processors or PSPA or UCB or Bob Alverson's group, you know, the, the longliners? Um, or is it just specific? Is the tenant just this new maritime kind of cluster group? Yeah, yeah, I think um, we may have some up upgrades to our conferencing capacity at Fisherman's Terminal in general, and I, you know, maybe Stephanie can uh, talk to, to that a little bit. But our intention here is for the accelerator to operate there. But I think that there will be opportunities for additional meeting. Um, but it, it won't be like a sign up for the conference room and you can kind of be in there. It, just looking at the design, it looked like an ideal place for you know, say if the North Pacific Fisher Management Council had a committee meeting that's in town, yeah. we struggle with trying to find a place. And we've been actually using the the Mountaineers facility out on Sand Point. Oh, is that right? But that's okay. I mean, but it would be so cool if we could really show off to our Alaskan brethren. Yeah. A, a, a cornerstone type piece of real estate that we could hold hearings and meetings and stuff in. Um, so that's. Yeah, we'll take that to heart. Um, you know, we're here to get your input. Yeah, Brent, I think that's yeah, an excellent uh, comment and suggestion. Um, this this new facility is going to be an exceptionally fine space that is, I think, will fit in well with the vernacular kind of a working shop design overall that is expressed at Fisherman's Terminal. But the space can be made to be flexible um with an upper i believe it has an upper mezzanine and i think yes. it could accommodate you know reasonably sizable gatherings in a variety of ways and I, I think that's something that our designers should really take into account uh, there really is no really appealing space right now um for those kinds of variety of, of, of gathering events that occur so i like that idea very much Thank you. Yeah, we we do we do struggle, and yeah. some of the our government trade uh, partners, is, you know, the associations, National Marine Fisheries Service or Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, when they hold meetings, we always say, well, we want you to come to the port, you know, but we don't really Where? have a place for them to meet with us. Yeah. 
I see You're a hand from Stephanie you know, Jones. Fine, so <laughs> that's not quite the same. I, I just wanted to follow up on something Kira mentioned. We are actually um, looking at upgrading um, the Nordby uh, conference facility there as well. So um, I, I hear your comments, and if you have any other input, love to chat with you about that. And I see Craig Morris has his hand up. Craig, please unmute your microphone and give us your question. Well, I just want to really second what Brent Payne just said. I mean, Brent left genuine Alaska pilot producers out of the, the list there, but we have an annual meeting each year, and, and I think we would really like the opportunity to use the space as well. We had about 250 uh, that we, we had virtually last year, and we would re really like to bring them to the port if that's possible. Yeah, it's good to hear. Yeah, we will uh, we'll definitely take this to heart. Any further questions? Mick, I'm seeing a question in the chat if you'd like to address that one. OK. Let's see here. The question is, uh, let's see. Let me make sure I got the right one. The first one I got is from Ryan Cross. And the question is, I am a tenant of the marina and recently discovered someone sleeping on the bridge of my boat. Are there plans to imp improve security of the docks, locked gates, for example, or something else? And I see Stephanie responded to that in writing. Um, we've got a question from Michael Jarmarco. Will there be do you, signage? Do you wanna, do you wanna read the, the response? Yes, um, Stephanie replied, Ryan, so sorry to hear that. We are not currently planning on gates, but I will take that back to the operations and security team to discuss. And, and I will just add that uh, security in this area and really throughout Ballard has been a significant challenge and we are working on that in, in multiple fronts. And I will also talk with our uh, Port of Seattle police about that. So thanks for, very much for raising that. Thank you. And from Michelle Jamarco, we have a question, will there be signage for the floating wetlands by the bulkhead and are they going to remain? So I am not, I, I don't have an answer to that question. I wonder if any of my colleagues can, yes, yeah, Delmas. Hi, good evening. Um, yes, we've talked to our environmental staff and uh, they are, we're working together to provide those uh, uh, a, a little history behind those uh, those wetlands, and uh, um, uh, so we hope to have something soon uh, because uh, we've had an increased interest in, uh, in in that particular project. So thank you, Michelle. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll update you in the very near future about where we're going with that. Okay. Thanks, Thomas. And, and I, just for everybody's introduction, Delmas Whittaker is actually our senior manager of Fisherman's Terminal. So he manages the operations, especially on the water side. And uh, as a, uh, we are very fortunate to have him there at the helm. Thanks, Delmas. Okay, uh, we have a question from Cheryl, who's with the Neighbors Advisory Committee. She said she came late to the meeting and she's not sure if we can take a few minutes to go over general or larger scale improvements to the terminal. And my colleague Mary Jean Stevens replied to that and said, hi, Cheryl, we will send out a PowerPoint and a recording of this presentation to everyone who RSVP'd. We also will be sending out um, a copy of the PowerPoint. So yeah, we'll, we'll uh, have that information available for you. Let's see if there are any other questions, any hands raised. I don't see any hands raised right now. Oh, there's one uh, from Brent Payne. Brent, please. Sure, I, sorry, I, I'll ask another question. So the uh, the current old B of A building and the couple that sheds next to it, your gateway you know, project, you, you said, uh, Kara, it's on hold. Is, is that pretty much gonna stay like that for the next couple years then? Um, or any kind of interim improvements to it? Or is it just- yeah. um, you I read my that, mind. Yes, yes. You know, so, great uh, question. I drive by that. We used to bank there, and then we, we had to go to either Magnolia or, or Ballard because we're still at B of A, and that was a big loss to us and a lot of the boat owners that did bank there. Um, but be that as it may, um, it's kind of an eyesore. It's the first building you see when you come into the terminal. Uh, I wondered if somehow during that next couple of years something good could happen. 
Well, um, you might have gotten yourself a committee assignment because, uh, yeah, we are we when we decided to pause the development of the design, the question that you're bringing up now, you know, surfaced immediately. What are we going to do with the site? And so we'll spend the next several months looking at design strategies for an interim hold of the site that will include everything from demolition of all the properties and kind of, you know, refocusing that site on something that we can hold the site for a couple of years or maybe a handful of just one or two of the buildings so maybe we take the the bank building down but leave the net sheds so we're doing an internal evaluation right now um, that looks at what zoning will allow what we can basically afford to do what is the most complementary to our overall design objectives and what paves a good way for the future so we're we're thinking about that we're working on this strategic the strategy if there are particularly interests, um, particular interests that people have that don't Im involve a big building program, for instance, we're not going to build an interim building on this facility. Um, but if there are uses and suggestions that you have for how the site could be used, say over a five-year period, um, you know, we and, and it's complementary to our financial goals, um, we can certainly take it into consideration. So thanks. I'm glad you asked me the question to get into it a little bit more because I didn't get into it in much detail. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, just I, I don't know if you knew this, but Discovery Health used that site to do the backs or to do the testing of COVID early on for the fishermen uh, going to Alaska last spring, and it was an excellent site for that. Yeah, I think that's a good congregation space for sure, and they're still our partners out there. So. We have another question. Will there be a Fisherman's Fall Festival in 2021? That was from Cheryl, who's also in the, who's in the Neighbors Advisory Committee. And my colleague Mary Jean Stevens wrote that unfortunately, due to COVID-19 uncertainty, the festival will not take place this year and our goal is to be back in 2022. Let's see, I don't see any other hands right now or anything in the chat. Any other questions? Okay, well, please remember that um, you can ask questions at this uh, email address here, ftredevelopmentoutreach at portseattle.org. And we'll also send all of you a copy of the PowerPoint and a link to the recording of this event and uh, you can ask questions uh, via email as well in that way. Um, Mary Jean, anything critical you'd like to cover at this point or? No, I there? just like to thank everyone for attending. We appreciate your participation and we look forward to any future comments or suggestions you have for us. So don't be, don't be shy about reaching out and I wish you all a good evening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Mick and Mary Jean. I appreciate you all coming out. Take care. Be safe. <clears throat>